Howdy folks. Today I'm going to be talking about enhancing your focus with org mode. Maybe you've heard about org mode from that Emacs guy at work, uh, but now's your chance to see in action what's the, what's the hubbub all about. So what is org mode? It's a system within Emacs for organizing notes and tasks. And it's broadly considered to be one of two killer apps that people will actually fire up Emacs to use and even switch to Emacs to use. Uh, to borrow a term from Andy Hunt in a book I read recently, uh, Pragmatic Thinking and Learning, it's an exocortex. It's an example of an exocortex. And the idea of an exocortex is to have a memory system that exists outside of your head. Um, anything from a notebook to, you know, Google Calendar and Slack reminders and things like that. But the idea is really just to remember it outside of your head so that you don't need to spend your attention remembering things or worrying about whether you're going to remember things. So why use org mode? In, first of all, the goal of any exocortex is to get organized and not forget things. So that's pretty important. If you're trying to juggle a lot of balls, you don't want to drop any. Um, but one of the more subtle aspects of, of getting organized this way is that it really helps you maintain focus on what's in front of you. And that's the focus of this screencast is how do we enhance our focus using org mode as an exocortex? So that's the goal of any exocortex, but why, why use org mode for an exocortex? Why not some other system or some other software? These are some of the things that I like about it. Obviously, your mileage may vary, you know, tastes differ, but th these are some things that I like. Everything's plain text. Um, I deal with plain text all day, every day. I'm a programmer, so I'm really good at manipulating text. I've got my Vim style key bindings and all that kind of thing. So, um, so this is familiar to me, and if I can use the same keyboard bindings and all that to manipulate text in org mode, then so much the better. I don't have to learn a whole lot of new keyboard commands. Um, there's also, it's been around a while, I, I think since 2003. Um, so there's a lot there. A lot of people have worked on adding things to, to org mode and contributing there. So it's really kind of packed with different features. I'm really only going to be scratching the surface about org mode in, in this little screencast. Uh, it's also really customizable and extensible, um, largely by virtue of it being an Emacs package and living within sort of the Emacs ecosystem or whatever. Um, but that really makes it uh, good for power users like me. If I really want to personalize it and make it my own and, and um, make it just right, then I can. Lastly, I'll mention that uh, it's really a nice feature of an exocortex to be able to carry it around with you in your pocket. And that's something that's pretty easy with org mode. Um, there are phone apps in iOS and Android for uh, seeing org mode files. And you can actually, and even manipulating org mode files. You can uh, sync that pretty easily with Dropbox if you, if you, wanna, if you have a Dropbox account and want to use it that way. So pretty easy to set up and use that way. I'm going to shift and start talking about um, and showing some of the features that I use day to day for org mode. Um, and I'm really, again, focusing on just the stuff that helps me enhance my focus. Try to stay focused on the topic at hand. Um, first of all, outlining. So you've been watching me, you know, show and hide these different things uh, here so far already. And that's really the, the whole structure of an org mode file is built around an outline and hierarchical data, hierarchical notes and tasks and things like that. And it's really easy to fold a headline and hide it from view, which is really useful to maintain focus because um, if I'm not wanting to focus on something, it's nice to be able to collapse it into just a single line and then to expand whatever I'm focusing on to take up more of the view. And I do that in, I, I'm using Space Max here, and so I can just hit tab and show and hide whatever's there. So that's nice. Uh, to do states. Um, Notes are really useful to capture in org mode. I, I'm even reading a book right now and trying to capture notes as I'm, take, as I'm reading that book. But if I want to distinguish between something that I need to do, some task that I need to take action on, I can add a to-do flag to it. And here in SpaceMax, I'm just hitting T to cycle through the to-do sequence. So I hit T to, hit, to make it to-do, and I hit T again to make it um, done. 
and this is a quick indication even when it's collapsed of uh, what are the tasks and, and what are things that I need to think about doing. So one point I want to make here is that all of this is still just text. I can freely manipulate this if I want to. Um, all that's fine. Even this done label is just text. If I take out that E, you can see it's just all caps text. If I add the E back, it becomes a sort of uh, special label there. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is um, this looks like it's a fancy Unicode character. It's really not. It's just a star. But SpaceMax is displaying it in a sort of prettier way for me here. So again, just text. It might look that way because it's decorated, but it's still just text. All right, progress indicators. I'm going to show how these work before I talk about them. Um, this is really just showing how many of the tasks under a headline are done right now. So it's a good way to get a sense of the progress of a task. So if I mark this as done, you'll see that the progress indicator updates for me automatically. So going through, it's, it's again, this feeling of uh, um, progress happens. So if I'm, if I'm all done here, then it says three of three. I see this in green, which is kind of nice, and that shows up even in the headline. Now, uh, one thing that's really nice about this is that um, it has this feeling of progress. And this is kind of a psychological thing, but it's kind of powerful. I've noticed for, for my own uh, psychology here. If I have a checklist and I'm just going through and checking things off as the, as the day goes on, it feels good to check those things off. And it feels like progress, you're, you're satisfied with yourself. And that good feeling kind of reinforces your focus because you want to keep having that good feeling. And so you want to stay focused on what you're doing and continue to make progress. So kind of a subtle thing, but it does enhance focus. Another thing is um, if you're starting on a task and uh, maybe if it's a bigger task, there's if you're like me, you have these thoughts swirling around in your head of like, oh man, I gotta do this and this and this and this and all these things are swirling around in your head, it's a little bit hard to get started um, because you gotta not only pick one to start with and figure out what the right one to start with is, but you also have to try to remember all the other things you have to do and you get distracted by trying to remember, which is a good cue to store things in your exocortex. So if you start out your task by planning your execution and laying out all the different steps that you're gonna need to take to, to finish this task, that's a really good way to get all of the steps out of your head into your exocortex. Maybe you can rearrange them and order them in a logical order. And at that point, you pick the first one. It's a smaller task. You don't have to worry about remembering all the other stuff. And it's really easy to dive in and get started on that. It's a great way to break the ice and uh, just keep moving on things, even at the beginning of a, of a task. So that's progress indicators. Um, another thing that often happens in my work anyway is um, I, I sometimes do more, more management than programming and especially for that kind of a thing. Um, there are often cases in which I need to remember to do something later. So the idea there is schedule it now and forget about it and assuming that you have a decent exocortex, trust it to remind you at the right time. Um, and so I want to show how I can do that in org mode here. But yeah, just get, get the future tasks out of your head into your exocortex so that you can focus on the now. So I'm going to show uh, scheduling for some of these uh, example tasks here. Let's say that I want to wash the car. I'm going to schedule that, comma S in space max for Saturday. And if I look at my agenda, I'm actually going to restrict it to just be this buffer. Um, I don't know why. That's, oh, that's already scheduled, that's, I see. So Saturday, you can see, sure enough, that's, that's scheduled. And I'm, I'm looking at my agenda now, which is just showing me all the things I have scheduled for this week. And sure enough, wash the car is scheduled for Saturday. Now, I had scheduled this one already, and the idea for that was um, when I look at my agenda, if something had been scheduled already, and today it's still not done, I'm going to get reminded about that. It's going to show up today, every every day, until I actually mark it as done. So I can actually do that from here. I hit T and mark it as done. GR will refresh the agenda view. 
and um, it disappears from today's view because it's not relevant for today, it's already done. Another thing that you can do is uh, mark a deadline, set a deadline for a task. So comma D can do that. And let's say one week out I have an iteration meeting planned. Now a deadline's a little bit different than scheduling a task, and you can see that in the agenda view, what happens is that even though the deadline isn't for seven days, I'm warned about this in advance. So every day when I look at my agenda for today, it says, you have a deadline coming up, just keep that in mind. You can, of course, control um, per task what, how many days in advance you're warned about a deadline. So that's uh, scheduling. Good way to maintain focus there to get future tasks out of your head and focus on the here and now. Capturing stray thoughts is another thing. Um, I will often get a stray thought just randomly hit me uh, right as I'm in the middle of doing maybe some coding. I'll think, oh, that would be a good lightning talk or something like that. Um, and I want to capture that. But I don't want to. I don't want to try to remember it as I'm coding. That's distracting and it, it just damages my focus. So if I can capture that in my exocortex, especially if I can do it in a low friction way, that uh, I'm not distracted by the process of capturing, but I can do it kind of fluidly and, and maintain my focus, then that's a really good feature of an exocortex. And sure enough, you can do that with orb mode. Um, so what I do for that, I've, uh, there's some customization that I've done for my own uh, usage of org mode. So if I say app org capture, this is a built-in thing for Space Max, um, I can capture a work task or a life task. Uh, I'm actually going to cancel this and show you my life.org file. I have a header up here at the very top that says unfile tasks. And if I capture a life task, this is just the menu that I have, um, and, and this is part of the customization that, customization that I've done. The menu is standard, but the specific items I've, I've uh, customized. So I hit L for life task, and you can see in this middle buffer, um, this is the template that I've defined for a life task. So it's going to be marked as to do. It's going to note when the capture happened. And it's prompting me for the task name right now. So if I say a life task, then that shows up in my life.org buffer here. File gets saved automatically, and there it is. Now, I can also do this from any old place in my, uh, in my OS, from Mac OS, by hitting, I have a Quicksilver trigger set up. Um, and same thing, um, another life task. So if I'm in the middle of a meeting or something like that, it's nice to be able to just capture that without even needing to switch over to Emacs. So that's capturing. Um, this actually happened to me, fun anecdote, um, earlier this week. I'm in the middle of coding and my wife asks me, hey, what do you think about getting chickens? And uh, I actually like that idea. I like chickens, I like eggs, but I'm in the middle of coding. I don't want to talk about this right now. So I, I wrote back to her and said, I'd love to talk about that with you. Can we talk about it later? She's like, sure, yeah. Um, so I capture the thought, I file it under my, uh, in my life.org file, I file it under, there's my wife now, um, file it under um, discussions that I need to have with my wife. So then when I'm at the dinner table, I've got my expo cortex in my pocket and look and see, is there anything I needed to discuss with my wife today? And I remember, oh yeah, let's discuss chickens. And I bring it up and I get husband points for being such a thoughtful husband and remembering that. So win-win. Um, all right, so that's pretty much all I have to show you. I'm trying to keep this relatively short. Um, in conclusion, this really is just scratching the surface of what you can do in org mode. Um, and as an encouragement, developing an exocortex will really help you focus and stay organized. I wish that I had figured all this org mode stuff out far earlier in my career. I think I would have been more effective at everything I wanted to do. Um, but I didn't, but I want to pass that knowledge on to, to you all. So I hope, hope you found it useful. I'll leave you with this quote about focus from Dune, a uh, really good book. Um, and uh, I would love to hear any comments that you have. I, I enjoy getting comments on these YouTube videos. So uh, please feel free to leave a comment uh, or, or a thumbs up. Um, that, that's always nice. And, and do share it with your friends if anybody might find this useful. Cool. That's all I got. Thanks.